Okay, get your science book out. It's time for science. And open it to page 63. 63. You finished up unit one yesterday with our little test. And today we're going to start unit two. Unit two is called the engineering process. So we learned about scientists in unit one. Now in unit two, we're going to learn about engineers, more about engineers. I know you heard a lot about them in that very first week of school. So let's look at today's essential question. What is an engineering design process? Well, we know a little bit about what engineers are. They design things. They make things. Designing is to make something. And a process is like steps you use to do it. So we see here on this picture, here's an engineer. He's designing some kind of car out of wood. I'm not sure what kind of car it is. Maybe it looks like a Mustang or something. But they're making a model. So that's part of the engineering process. Let's go ahead and start this lesson. What is engineering? From the food we eat and the clothes we wear to the cars we drive and the phones we talk on, science is at work in our lives every day. Electrical engineers use their knowledge of physics to build things like this robot. Look at that robot. It's got eyelashes and big eyeballs, some lips. That would be fun to make, wouldn't it? Engineer made that, designed it. Look around. Many of the things you see are products of engineering. The computer you're looking at right now was engineered too, wasn't it? Engineering is the use of scientific and mathematical principles to develop something practical. Some engineers use biology, others use geology, chemistry, or physics. Engineers use this knowledge to create something new. It might be a product, a system, or a process for doing things. Whatever it is, it's practical. People use it. Engineers develop things that people use. Let's see what it says up here. Knowledge of math and geology allows surveyors to make maps of the earth. This biomedical engineer uses his knowledge of biology to make glass eyes. Wow. So, you know, it talked about right here, different types of engineers. Some use biology, some use geology. Biology is like the study of life. So if you're interested in life, a uh, study of life, like animals and people, you might like that. Geology is the study of the earth. Chemistry is chemicals, physics. It's kind of like a, Physics is motion and force and things like that, how things move. So an engineering engineer is a really good job to have. I thought about being an engineer before I became a teacher, actually, and decided I wanted to be a teacher. But perhaps you would like to be an engineer. Let's find out more about what they do. What is the design process that engineers use? It's been said that necessity is the mother of invention. But once you find a need... How do you build your invention? That's a design process. What is design? Design means to conceive something and prepare the plans and drawings for it to be built. Engineers use the design process to develop new technology, but anyone can follow the design process. From basic to complex, skateboards have changed over time. There's just a piece of wood with some wheels on it. Now they're pretty fancy. My daughter bought a skateboard that she could use uh, to roll around MTSU to classes. So it gets her there faster, she says. But skateboards can get pretty fancy and expensive. They've been designed to be better than the old ones were. The design process starts with identifying a need or a problem. Similar to the scientific method, isn't it? First, we ask a question. We identify a need. Next, you brainstorm and you write down ideas on how to plan and build a potential solution. Once you have some options, select a solution to try. Usually engineers test possible solutions using a prototype. A prototype is an original or test model on which a real model or real product is based. If the prototype works, then the real product is made. Usually after testing a prototype, improvements have to be made. The prototype is then tested again, Finally, a finished product is made. So here's the design process steps this page told us about. Find the problem, plan and build, test and improve, 
redesign, and communicate. Even something seemingly simple takes a lot of thought, planning, testing, and improvement. We watched a video a couple weeks ago on those kid inventors. They found the problem. The one that stands out in my mind right now is the two boys. And remember, they had a grandmother who had a walker. But when she was walking, she couldn't use her walker and an umbrella. So they found the problem was that she couldn't hold an umbrella while she was using her walker to walk. So what did they do? They planned. They designed a walker that had a build on umbrella. So it stayed over her head. Do you think they got it right the first time? Probably not. Maybe it was too flimsy and it fell off. So they had to test it and improve it and then redesign it and then communicate it, share it, and give it to the grandmother and say, look what we made you. So there's the design process. Design you can use. Look, at around, look around you at all the things you use every day. Do you have ideas about improving them? Who needs it? The first step in any design process to, is, is to identify a need or a problem. Is there a chore that could be easier? A tool that could work much better? A car that could go faster or be safer? Often the design process begins with the phrase, what if? Can you think of anything that is in your house, maybe that you use every day or that somebody in your house uses and you're always saying, boy, that's so hard to use. Could you think of some way to make it better, make it easier? Or is there a chore that you're doing that's so hard that could be done easier? Well, think about it. That's the identifying a need part of the process. Then prototype. A prototype is a test version of a design. To build a prototype, a person has to have plans. Early sketches give a rough idea. More detailed drawings provide exact measurements for every practice for every piece. Keeping good records and drawings help to make sure the prototypes can be replicated. That means to do them again, be able to make another one. The skateboard turns fairly well, but what if it could go around the curves even better? So this little guy, maybe he's thinking about, he's looking at the wheels and thinking, how could this be designed to make this skateboard turn even better? Okay. So some details of the sketches and different drawings of the prototype. Sketches and detailed drawings are an important step in planning a product. Every part of the product can become an opportunity for a design change. So there's three parts they're showing here. You've got the deck. That's the flat piece that you stand on on the skateboard. You've got, these are called the trucks. They're attached to the deck and then you put the wheels on them. And of course, the wheel. So if you're thinking about turning, which one of these three things do you think would be the best to change? What do you think? Do you think some wheels that are more round would make it easier to turn? Kind of round on the edges instead of flat on across? Or maybe some kind of hinged truck with springs on them like they are on your car? It helps your car turn? I don't know. That's what engineers do, though. They think of a problem and try to find a solution by designing and building prototypes. Are we done yet? Now that the prototype has been built, can the final product be far behind? Yes, it can, but it might not be. It all depends. You've got to test and improve it. Prototypes are carefully tested. This testing helps answer questions such as, does it work the way it should? Is it easy to use? How does it hold up under normal working conditions? The first prototype you build may pass all its tests. If so, the prototype can go into production. However, it's more likely that testing shows that, design, that the design needs to change. Once the test results are analyzed, it's back to the drawing board. The product may need only a few minor improvements or it may need to be completely redesigned. If a prototype works as expected, it will become a finished product. So look there. you got a fancy skateboard now. It's got a high step on the back. It can swivel it. It's turning much better, it looks like. Redesign and share. When a prototype fails to meet a design goal, it may be redesigned. Redesign takes advantage of all the work done before. Good design features are kept 
and those that fell are discarded or thrown away. They weren't any good. Multiple solutions to the same design problem can help engineers identify which one works best. When the final working prototype is done, team members communicate the design. Sketches, blueprints, test data, and analysis are shared. Engineers have designed a solution to a problem while working around one or more constraints on, or limits on possible solutions. Engineers have also worked to meet the criteria in the final design. The criteria are the desirable, desirable features of a solution that meet a need or want. Sometimes one prototype idea leads to another prototype idea. New ideas keep the engineering design process constantly moving forward. Have you ever been to an old car show, like a, a car show in Pigeon Forge or maybe at a fair or something like that? And you look at those old cars, do they look like cars do today? And they don't, do they? Why is that? Because over the years, engineers have redesigned cars to try to make them use less fuel, to make them more, to make them more aerodynamic where the wind doesn't blow against them so hard and make them use less fuel that way. Maybe they've designed better tires. So things change over time and designs get better and better and better. I know all of you know what an iPhone is. And so iPhones have changed over time too, from the iPhone one to the iPhone, whatever there is now, 11 or something, they've changed a lot. And each one has supposedly been engineered to be a better phone than the one before it was. I've got an old, I've got, well, the new 2020 iPhone SE is what I got. I just wanted a little one. I don't need a big old phone. And it's sure a lot better than the other phone that I used to have. All right, let's sum it all up. So the first steps in identifying the design process to identify a need or problem to be solved. Find that need. The next step is to plan and build a prototype. Brainstorming ideas and drawing detailed sketches are important parts. The third part is test and improve your prototype. After testing, a prototype might need to be redesigned and tested again. A prototype that meets all its design goals are ready for production. The final step in the design process is to communicate to others the details of a working prototype. You know what I would love for you to do? If we were here at school, we would do this. I would love for you, and I asked you to do this before, to engineer a paper plane that would fly the farthest. You think you could do that? Could you draw what it should look like? Hmm. This is not really a problem, is it? But a need, the need in my quest for you is this. Who can fly an air, airplane the farthest, a paper airplane? So you've got to plan it. You've got to build it. Maybe draw some uh, pictures of what it should look like. Then you've got to test it and say, oh, that I did didn't work very good. I need to improve my prototype. And then after testing, a prototype might need to be redesigned and tested again. If you redesign it, you test it again. And then when you think you finally designed one that is, is going to fly farther than anybody else's, it's ready for production. You make it, and then you're ready to have a little airplane flying competition. So if you want to build one and you want to use uh, some somehow take a picture of yourself or a video flying your airplane, send it to me on the email and I'll show it in one of our Google Meets, okay? All right, this down here, we've talked about all this. You don't have to worry about this, but here on page 73, I do want you to do these. Use clues to help you write the correct word in each row. Some boxes have been filled in for you, okay? So we've got several right here. You're gonna look at A, to conceive something and prepare plans to build it. So what would that be? You're going to go across like this, okay? You know the second letter is E, so go back and look at our lesson and see what word matches this definition. To conceive something and prepare plans to build it. And this would be B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So they're in order. Like top one's A, next one's B, and so on. So do that for me, okay? Then you'll have a little assignment. Um, to match um, some 
a little quiz to match those words. And you can use this page once you've got it done. Make an easy hundred on today's assignment by using this because all I'm going to do is copy these definitions and put the several words that you got to choose from. So if you got it done, it's an easy 100. Use your book and make a 100. Let's look at this page. Write numbers in the circles to put the pictures in the correct order. So what are we doing here? We're deciding what's the problem. So, all right. So looks like this might be their first design. They've got some drawings. Okay. So they've designed a skateboard that's going to turn better. So that would be one. And once they've kind of got their engineering done, their sketches, maybe they're going to draw a picture of what a more finished product is going to look like. So that's two. And then they're going to build that finished product. Maybe this says it's a 3D model of a skateboard on a computer or something. And then they're going to actually design it. And there it is. So it went from an idea to a drawing to a 3D model to the real thing as the engineering process. How is a prototype different from the finished product? Well, remember, a prototype is like this. We drew this. Here's what we want to try to build. So we build a prototype and it's going to work or it's not going to work. If we test it and it works really, really well, we might use this prototype to make the finished product. The finished product is after you've done the sketching and the drawings and the planning and the building a prototype and you find the prototype works, then you design the finished product and start producing it. Okay, this is the last step, but you gotta make sure the prototype works well first. <coughs> Number four, why is it better to build and test a prototype of a product than to produce tens of thousands of the product and test it. Well, what if it doesn't work? Then you've produced tens of thousands of things that don't work and you wasted a lot of money and time. So better to build just one prototype and test it before you produce a whole bunch of them. The owner of a safety apparel company asked an engineer to design a better helmet for skateboarders. How would you improve this instruction? So he wants them to design a better helmet for skateboarders owner of a safety apparel company ask an engineer to design a better helmet for skateboarders. How would you improve this instruction? Hmm. You could be more specific, couldn't you? We could say design instead of just saying a better helmet, you could say, well, what's the problem with the old helmet? We've got to identify the problem, right? Oh, the old helmet didn't cover their ears and people were falling down and scratching their ears. <laughs> It wouldn't, that didn't work right. So if that's the old problem, then we want to build a new one that covers their ears. Or maybe the problem is that some skateboarders have braces and they're falling and they're hitting their face on the ground and it's making their braces cut into their gums. Oh no. Well, you might want to design a helmet with a face mask that would protect their face if they fell. That was how, that would, how, that would be how I would design it would improve this instruction. I would be more specific. This says, which job is more likely to be done by an engineer and why? Developing a new material that will be used to make the outer covering of vitamin capsules or determining how vitamins are absorbed into the bloodstream. What do you think? You think an engineer is going to examine how vitamins are engineered into the bloodstream? Is that what they do? Or do they develop and build new things? I think an engineer is more likely to do this, developing a new material that will be used to make the outer covering of a vitamin capsule. Because the engineers build things, they design things, they make things. Okay? So an engineer would do this. This is something more like a doctor would do or somebody who studies um, your, your body. So why? Because engineers are the ones who actually design and build things. All right. The engineers in an appliance company have developed a new dishwasher. It looks very different from previous models. The controls look different and work differently. The part of the machine that heats the water has been completely redesigned. Now that the plans are completed, should the company start producing thousands of these dishwashers? Why or why not? What do you think? They, they redesigned the, the water heater. 
They've got the plans completed. Should they produce thousands of them? What do you think? What did we say a minute ago? You better build a prototype first and make sure it works right. Because if they build thousands of dishwashers, those things are expensive. I had to buy one not long ago, and it was like $500. So if you build a 1000 that's $500,000 you spend, half a million dollars. And what if that little water heater thing isn't working? Well, then you wasted $500,000. So probably not produce thousands. You better test them first. That's part of the engineering process. Test and redesign if you need to. Okay. Now, what I want you to do, remember, is go back in your book and here on page 73, find the words from our lesson, fill in these blanks, and then go to do today's science quiz, which will test these exact same words, remember, with these exact same definitions. So go match them and make an easy 100. All right. And learn some about engineering words. We'll learn more about engineering tomorrow in science. See you then.